Yeah, g'day, it's uh, Charlie ZL2 CTM. Uh, finally back off holiday, which was good. Um, over the last couple of days, I've been sort of continuing on um, playing around with that Class E amplifier. You recall from the last video that I was going to try um, this particular circuit here uh, from that design paper uh, using a serial uh, resonance circuit on the output of the three BS170s. Um, using those three BS170s there just to share uh, the current load there so I don't exceed um, the, the limits of that particular one device. Um, I did build up the circuit um, and while I was producing um, around 5 watts, uh, for whatever reason it took a while to reach that. So when I would key down, the issue I was having is the, the output um, waveform would slowly grow up to out to the desired value uh, and that took several seconds um, and as that waveform grew the current being drawn through the amplifier gradually increased uh, and, as, and as she got right up to about 0.6 of an amp which is certainly quite high um, and obviously the, the three BS170s warmed up once I was up to let's say temperature any other keying after that it was instantaneous at the 5 watts so I toyed, you know, I, th I thought mm, that's, that's not right uh, and I sort of toyed with the idea of actually sticking with that and then just having a, uh, a warm up key, key down period before using the transmitter and then from that point onwards would be right but that just didn't sit right and, and it's really not the right way of doing it. Um, I did try uh, varying the value of L2, um, L1 of course is just an RFC, uh, 10 turns on FT37-43. Um, I, and I played around with all these three values here, the two capacitors as well as that inductor uh, and really didn't manage to, to fix that problem um, and I just, I just couldn't quite work out what was going on. So I thought I'd try something else different as well and did some reading up on um, some Class D amplifiers uh, from uh, Hans Summers G0 UPL and Paul Harden NA5N and uh, I settled on, let me just zoom out a little bit there uh, playing around with this particular circuit here so once again it's got the, the three BS170s um, and uses a parallel resonance circuit so got the one inductor going up to VCC um, and the, out, the top side of that inductor or the VCC side is uh, decoupled uh, and I just grabbed out of the junk box a, a 0.01 microfarad capacitor and the whole idea is um, you again drive or switch the gates of those MOSFETs uh, with a, a square wave, a nice square wave, in this particular case uh, 5 volts peak to peak um, which will be the same as uh, the SI5351 and then um, that square wave output, well not that square wave output, it's a pulse output which we'll see on the scope in a sec um, dumps energy into that parallel resonance circuit um, and the way that uh, Hans Summers talks about designing this particular one the approach that he takes uh, which I did try um, was to use an online calculator in this particular case I used uh, toyroids.info um, to, to determine what value of that um, inductor needs to be in order for the parallel resonance circuit to present 50 ohms because uh, typically the 50 ohms is what you use for the next um, next part and as we'll see in the circuit over here uh, that low pass filter is, is set for 50 ohms so if you uh, do that on that particular calculator there you can type in in my particular case I want this to be um, on the 40 meter CW band so I chose a frequency halfway through that particular CW segment so 7.025 megahertz uh, I told it I wanted 50 ohms and then the calculator spat out we well, need to then have 16.8 turns um, in parallel with a 453 picofarad capacitor so for initial playing around I set that to 17 turns uh, and 470 picofarads being a, um, a standard value um, and that's what you see over here now, um, what else I want to mention before we uh, we arc it up? Um, this capacitor C here, you also need to take into consideration um, the capacitance 
between the drain and the source of your MOSFET. In this particular case, I've got one, two, three devices. So I've got three times, got some parallel and capacitors in parallel you add together. Three lots of that, um, that capacitance between the, the drain and the source. So I need to factor that in uh, when trying to determine that value there. So I um, I, I did that. So uh, and we'll just a bit of zoom up on that a little bit. So before I turn it on, I'll sort of just talk a little bit about it. We have the amplifier over here, and then the the follow-on low-pass filter. So we've got the one, two, three BS one seventies. Uh, we've got a 0.01 microfarad capacitor coupling in through that red wire there, the 5 volt switch, um, switching voltage, which is coming from um, the signal generator. Now that's currently set up with a duty cycle of 50%, um, which I'll talk about later on. Uh, there goes the inductor there, so that was the initially 17 turns, um, and I played around with both a T37-6, the yellow core, as well as the T37-6. Um, uh, dash uh, three, uh, sorry, dash two. My apologies, which is uh, the, the red core there. Um, of interest, so I initially set the capacitor across here at 470 picofarads and arced it up, um, and then I scoped. And that's what we've got here: the probes here, scoping the output of the low-pass filter, and also scoping um, the output or the drain of those particular MOSFETs. So, and that will give you a waveform here. Let's turn that current meter on there. Of looking like that. So, the top trace there is the output of the the MOSFETs that's on the drain. So that's what we typically want to see. Hard on and then hard off for the second half of the cycle of uh, what's coming in on the gate. And then our nicely recovered sine wave on the output of that low pass filter. So just cleaning up all those um, those harmonics here. And as you can see there, we're drawing around 0.3 of an amp. Now, of interest was, um, in order to tune this, I played around with the frequency of the SIGGEN and looked for a peak in our output. So, in other words, I was trying to find the, um, the exact resonant frequency for that inductor and capacitor combination there. Uh, and it kept turning out that the uh, resonant frequency of that was um, a couple of megs lower than the 7.025 megahertz. So as we know that the frequency of oscillation equals um, 1 over 2 pi root LC, thereby increasing um, L or increasing C, so again the other way around, reducing L or reducing C because it's on the bottom half of the formula would then allow the frequency of oscillation to, to increase. So um, I played around with that, initially just playing around with the capacitor settings uh, and then later on with the inductor. And as it turned out, um, the inductor didn't vary by too much. I dropped two turns off that. But of interest, my maximum signal that I could get out of this, which is around 5.8 watts at the moment, is with no capacitor across the output, which we can see there. So this is purely, at the moment, resonating with the output capacitance from those three devices and any stray capacitance on the board, um, which was quite interesting. And in that particular configuration, um, I'm now getting... Uh, like I say, 5.7 watts across that 50 ohm load on the output of that low pass filter. Um, I tried to minimize any stray capacitance by, as you can see there, having um, the, or separating the tracks as much as I could. So I removed all the material there and had um, the tracks separated by at least one spare one. Um, and then also looked to remove where I could any other. Um, unwanted material to reduce the capacitance um, and the reason why I, I elected to have a nice wide spacing there is because our capacitance formula is EOERA over D so capacitance is proportional to the area of the plates divided by the distance between them so if I can increase the distance between any potentially plates for capacitance then I can reduce the 
uh, that capacitance and also if I was to reduce the area so by, by me removing material then I'm also doing the same thing I'm also reducing any straight capacitance but uh, so that was actually interesting um, so as it turns out uh, so 5.7 watts output as we just saw before on the uh, the ammeter there drawing uh, 0.3 of an amp so if we do the uh, 0.3 of an amp multiplied by 12 volts coming in on the VCC and then divide that by 5.7 uh, we're coming out at around um, just over 62 odd percent uh, efficiency so that's not high at all uh, a classy amplifier should be around um, 80 percent um, I'm not entirely sure why that is the case um, this is the first time I've ever played around with a classy amplifier um, and I, you know, I'd like to say that no animals or no MOSFETs were harmed in the making of this video but several were um, I've been through a good 12 to 15 odd of these devices here by uh, by playing around with various values and boy oh boy um, it's amazing how quickly these things um, will go fut but anyway suffice to say I've tried my darndest to to get a nice efficient classy amplifier and um, I just haven't got it at this point in time um, what I've decided to do um, I'm quite happy with the with the five point um, seven odd or five point eight watts um, output from this that was that certainly on or about where I wanted to get to um, it certainly is a nice small from a footprint point of view amplifier there so I'm going to go ahead now and actually mount that um, in the circuit um, I've also been playing around with with that keying circuit here to reduce the key clicks uh, and that works perfectly fine um, that device here is a 2N3906 um, so I'm, I'm slightly exceeding its maximum rating for current through it but uh, it seems to be surviving quite nicely so I think at this point in time I'll just stick with that particular device to, 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 clean, up the key, uh, to clean up the key clicks so like I say I'm going to go ahead and, and mount that in um, we can then use the output of the SI5351 to, to drive this and, uh, and we'll see how we get on and uh, I'll probably look at a in, in a later project, a later CW project, is is to um, is to have another look at the class E amplifier um, and try and really work out what's going on. Maybe use an IRF uh, 510, um, which is a little bit more robust, and, um, and and really play around and see if I can get that efficiency up to that sort of 80 percent. Um, that's that's um, that should be for that particular amplifier. Now, I, should, I mentioned before um, duty cycle. So at the moment, uh, the SIG Gen is sitting on, that's coming up in the display there, a 50% duty cycle. Um, Paul, in some of his documentation, uh, suggests that he was getting max efficiency around, if I recall, I don't have it right in front of me, 40-odd um, percent um, duty cycle. Um, I found that as I started to decrease from 50% that my output was starting to drop off quite a bit so uh, it seems to me for me that the best option is to, is to keep that 50% um, square wave so that's good because that's exactly what's coming out of the SI5351 is, is a 50% a duty cycle so that should hopefully, fingers crossed, when we transition to when I transition to uh, mounting this back into the radio itself then hopefully we can um, and there goes the radio there with the SI5351 coming out of there um, we should hopefully get uh, a similar result uh, that we had right okay well I'm going to leave it there um, I'll say 73s uh, any questions sing out but I, I will say I'm absolutely no expert in these things uh, and certainly not when it comes to a class E amplifier um, I think the uh, the trail of dead components and uh, poor efficiency is uh, a testament to that. However, it's certainly been it's certainly been interesting, and uh, the performance of this particular amp was certainly, for whatever reason, um, a lot better and a lot more instant for me than than this one here. And some of the documentation online suggests that uh, that they can be a bit tricky to master, but once you master them, you'll never go back. So maybe that's the case. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, so I will say 73s here. 
and uh, hopefully next time we'll have uh, the radio all built up and boxed up um, and then I do want to put out a video thinking about um, the next radio which um, I'm thinking about doing a, uh, a USB say again a, um, uh, an SSB portable rig um, with a homebrew crystal filter um, using which I think I talked about in the, in the previous video uh, I think that'd be quite nice just to get around um, the use of some of these commercial filters here and go for a um, uh, go for a homebrew one. I've got a bag of I think there's a hundred here, a hundred crystals. So those are nine megahertz crystals uh, came in from China. So uh, I'll be quite curious to give those a go and um, see if we can't produce a, a nice um, a nice filter. We might, might even do both a, a CW and a an SSB one. Anyway, enough said, um, 73s, and uh, we'll see you next time.